Brad, good to see you. Uh, how are you keeping with, with the lockdown? We've, we've had a dog cast for a, a couple of, a couple of weeks, but uh, what what have you been up to? Um, yeah, that's it. I've, I've had other things keeping me busy. Um, obviously, the weather's been great, so making the most out of that. Um, keeping fit, really. Um, there's not much to do other than, than train, so I've been, I've been out on my back quite a bit. I'm turning into Bradley Wiggins now. Um, I like being able to tackle when I come back playing rugby. I, I lost that much weight. Um, so, yeah, I've been going out on my back quite a bit. Um, I've I mentioned that the dog cast that, that we did when we when we first um, was going into lockdown. I spoke about what I was going to try and do to keep to keep me in a good state of mind, and and one of the things was to um, try some new things. Uh, and I think I said guitar and reading. Uh, and I was six week in and I'd not done any of them, so I was a bit frustrated really. Um, but I wasn't too fussed because I'd, I'd not needed to because I was in a good state of mind, really, and I, wouldn't, I wasn't really driving myself mad. But then this week, I've cracked it. I've, I've read half a book. Um, Anthony Dutton's first man in it's called. I've read half a book, a book uh, and one of my best pals is learning me over the first time I play guitar. So hopefully, in the next couple of dog casts, you'll see me on guitar. And that nicely brings us into We've got some dog casts. For dog cast fans out there, we've, uh, there's a couple in the pipeline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a couple. Can we say who they are or not? Are we allowed to break that out? Oh, I think we can give an exclusive. Uh, yeah, well, we've got, we had a think, didn't we? And we've, we've got Barry McDermott. So he, he said he'll come on. And um, I think we've got some good questions and some good topics to what created his personality and, and the type of player he was on the field. Um, so we're going to have a chat about that. And then we've got the big boss. We've got Kevin. So that might be the last ever dog caster. He knows. Depends how he goes. And how, how have you found the dog cast? You, 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 you've spoken in, in them all about how much you're enjoying it and how much you know, it's giving you some uh, some uh, something to focus on. You've enjoyed the experience? Uh, yeah, I've really enjoyed this, the experience and I've been really pleased. I, I was getting really worked up and stressed trying to get the, the questions right because that was the reason I wanted to do them was to do something different and not just a generic interview. Um, so I was getting really worked up and then when I was doing things, I didn't know if they'd come out that, but then... Some of the interviews that I did, I think the Chev Walker one um, was 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 better than I expected. Was unreal. Uh, I really enjoyed the one with Rich Yeager um, and the one with Tony Smith. They, they were all great. And obviously, from my point of view, to have conversations with the coaches and, and people like that about myself and that it was good. Um, and the Tommy Lanham, I think, is my favourite. Uh, it was it was great. It just giving insight into what Tommy's like and and. Uh, so yeah, I've enjoyed it so far, um, and just learning whilst I'm doing it. So obviously, I'm bettering myself. So it's good. And you've been getting some coverage in the press as well. So it's uh, oh really yeah, adding, adding a string to your bow. Oh yeah, I had a, I seen my big ugly mug in, in across two pages in, in Daily Star. I think it was. Um, so yeah, that that was a good interview, and and I think I've said this in the past. That me talking about things in interviews, and and some people think that's. Well, I get the comment, oh, it's brave and it's inspiring that you're doing that. Um, but the way I see it now, that's probably the easiest way of me talking about it because it's, it's just me expressing how I felt and that's my therapy, really, because the more I go over it and talk about it, the more things start to start to cement in my mind because I'll think about something and I'll think, oh, I've nailed it. And then I'll, 10 minutes after I forgot about it. So to keep going over things is good for me. And... That's why I've done a couple of videos on my Instagram, just because I get that stressed out to trying to get my point across and make people understand that, that I'm sat thinking about it for hours, which is, is me learning about myself, really. And anyone who follows you on Instagram can see uh, you're getting back to nature as well. Bruce is, is getting plenty of uh, plenty of miles on the clock. Yeah, well, he's trimmed right up. I've had to, I've had to um, take it easy on him. I've had Dave Dwyer out. He's been out walking. He's lost a bit of weight. Um, so yeah, and, and the thing that I found with nature, um, I said to my dad, I went, we went for a walk one day and, and we ended up about five miles away from home. And um, I said to him, I said, if you'd have dropped me off here six months ago and told me to walk home, and I told you where to go. Uh, and we'd walk there and back and it just became the norm because it, it's we've just got in that routine that that's what we're doing and each day we're going further. And it's fine. But the thing that I found about walking, I used to think it was pointless. I didn't see any point in it. Some people would say, go for a walk, it's nice. I just didn't really see much point in it. But what it does is it just 
clears your mind and, and it allows me to not think about anything else other than what I want to be thinking about or if I put a podcast on or something like that and there's some topic on that podcast that triggers something and then that'll just fire me off and I can do an hour walking and just trying to figure things out and why I act in certain ways and why I do certain things. So yeah, it just creates an environment for me to think really. People are um, finding new ways to, to adapt to new skills. Do you think it's the sort of thing that you, you example there, we're walking, we'll keep up after after lockdown's finished? Uh, well, yeah, that was that was the point in the video that I did on Instagram. Um, I, wa- I listened to a, a podcast called um, Don't Tell Me The Score on BBC, and that gets former athletes or current athletes and talks about how sports links to life. And they had Chris, Chris Akabusi, I think it is, is it the former um, athletics geezer? He, he was on, and he was just bonkers the way he spoke, and that really made so much sense. He, he had a Nigerian background. He was in Kerr as a child. His mum moved to London, put him in Kerr as a child at four year old. And then he speaks about how lucky he was to have that um, structure around him in England. If he had it in Nigeria, it, it wouldn't have had any system to go in. Um, and then he just spoke about how each environment he's been in throughout his life has created his, well, his personality really and his traits. Because if he was in Nigeria now, it'd be totally different than it would be in England during the pa- pa- uh, pandemic. So it just made me start thinking about how I was a certain way and I didn't appreciate nature, I didn't appreciate my family, I didn't exercise or walk as much, I didn't read. So why was that? Because it's too easy to go and socialise with my friends. I was playing rugby, I was always focused on rugby, whether we won losing that affected my mood. So you've taken that away from me now that I can't do it and I've found all these things that are making me happy that I can control. So. The message from the video really was to once things go back to normal and the hustle and bustle of, of normality what however you want to call it just not to slip back into a normal self and my old mindset try and take some of these things that i've learned that are making me happier that are so simple and and the big one was was rugby and the results the, the result on a friday night or a performance on a friday night affected my mood until i went and played the week after so if we got beat on a, on a friday i couldn't wait for Hopefully it was a short turnaround for Thursday to win and forget about the last week, which, which is ridiculous, really. A game of rugby shouldn't determine your mindset or your mood for, for a week uh, because it's not in it's not in your control. You just got to rock up, play your best, and hope for the best. And uh, in terms of in terms of teams, we like keep in touch with the guys and and keep that social contact with them. Um, yeah, we, we've done a couple of Zoom calls as a group. Um, with different different guests on, ask questions and answers and stuff like that. Um, certain text messages. Uh, obviously, the the situation with pay cuts and that we had a few conversations over that. Um, so yeah, it's it it was. But to be fair, I'm missing them. And and one thing it has made me appreciate is how good of a group we had. And I'm not just saying this. Um, watched a couple of documentaries and stuff like that. Um, and it has just made me realise how lucky I am to be around a group that we've got. And it's made me miss it a bit, really, and and probably focus on when I go back, trying to make the most of being around that group. And as a sport, I've had some sad news. One of your former teammates, Jordan Cox, passed away uh, last week. Uh, I'm sure you'd like to pass on your your condolences to his family and friends and uh, memories yeah. of him. Yeah, it was, it was sad news. Um, I got a phone call off Stefan the day before it got released. Well, the day it got released, early doors, and... And he lived in Wigan Cox when he played at Warrington. So we did spend quite a bit of time and everyone knows what I'm like as a person and, and I'm pretty loud and pretty out there. Um, and Coxie was probably like me times 10. Um, so, yeah, it's just so sad. Um, and I just know that he was close with his mum and, and you, just feel, you feel for her, really. But um, just one of them things, isn't it? It's just such a shame. And I know you've been speaking to Stefan Ratchford, the pair of you looking to do something when this is all over, to, to try and raise some, some money to support his mum? Yeah, yeah. Um, and that that is it, is to try and raise some money to support his mum, because I think there was only them two, really. Um, and it just hit home, really. He was 27 years old, um, same age as me, and it just shouldn't happen. So um, when, it, when the dust settles, just do something for him in his name and hopefully raise some money. But basically, just do something for him, we said, and... and that's what it feels like. We just want to go out there and do something for him because there's not much else we can do. Uh, 